The Turquoise Pendant The day was especially hot. Bored to distraction, King Snofru summoned Jajemank, one of his lector priests, and demanded entertainment. Jajemank, whose name translates as he who carries the ritual book, came up with a plan. The king should go out in a boat on the palace lake, where he would cool off and take in the beauty of the scenery. To add to Snowfru's enjoyment, it was suggested that the boat be rowed by twenty of the most attractive girls from the royal harem. The king's downcast visage brightened at once. Let the boat be fitted with gilded oars of ebony and sandalwood, he ordered enthusiastically. The girls were instructed to replace the regular linen shifts with nets of faciant beads that scarcely concealed their curves. At first, all went well. The king reclined happily, enjoying the flowers, the birds, and the fish of his lake, but devoting most of his attention to the efforts of his scantily, scantily clad crew. After a while, however, the leading rower inadvertently dropped the fine turquoise pendant she wore in her braided hair into the lake. She cried out in dismay, and the rowing stopped. The poor girl was distraught at her loss. Indulgently, the king offered to replace the lost pendant from his own abundant reserves of turquoise, but the girl insisted that nothing other than the return of her own ornament would satisfy her. Jaja Monk, called the king, solve the problem. The lecture priest bowed and at once uttered, uttered a powerful spell. Instantly, the waters of the lake rolled back to reveal the amulet lying safely on the dry bed. Jaja Monk retrieved it, climbed back to the lake bank, and used another spell to return the lake to its former level. Snowfru was deeply impressed by Jaja Monk's prodigious powers and rewarded the servant with riches. The girl put her amulet back in her hair, and the rowing party continued throughout a long, happy afternoon.